everyone. In this iteration of the BPSA podcast, we meet the office of the Honorable Senator Lemes to discuss blockchain and cryptocurrency regulations and taxes. The passage of HR 3684, Infrastructure, Investment and Jobs Act, introduces burdensome regulations to the blockchain and cryptocurrency industry, which threatens the United States global competitiveness. The BPSA, which represents over 500,000 technology professionals and enthusiasts, has met with cryptocurrency advocate and state policy director, Mr. Tyler Lindholm, from the office of Senator Lames, a visionary on Capitol Hill, to collaborate on regulation and taxation strategies that will enable the USA to be world leader in the newest emerging technology. So handing over to Chris Terry from the BPSA and Mr. Tyler Lindholm. And so I volunteer at a couple open source organizations, all for free, right? I just do it because I love the right. industry. And I got started with another this group called the BPSAA, which is the Blockchain Privacy Security and Adoption Alliance, which I helped uh, co-found with a bunch of other small crypto projects to basically become the best practices for uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency. So that's kind of the hat I'm wearing today, okay. um, is the BPSAA. We grew from three or four small projects with about 20 or 30,000 followers on on uh, Twitter to over a half a million today. We've got Dragon Chain, which is a spin-off from Disney Corporation. You know, they have their own blockchain. Uh, we've got a ton of big projects on it. Komodo, some major projects have joined us. And now we represent about a half a million followers worldwide and growing like crazy. But it's completely grassroots, right? We don't have an office in, in Washington or anything like that. You guys as a businessman that we're going to have to, and this is the reason why I'm here, and this is why I'm so excited that you're here, Tyler. I mean, the work that you've done personally is like amazing, and Thanks. I want to thank you for that. Yeah. And of course, now you're with, uh, you know, with, with the Senator Lummis and what she's trying to do. So, and this gets to me get, coming to Wyoming as well with Wyoming wisdom. So, mm-hmm. looking around and saying, look, we recognize that we're going to have to legitimize this technology and how do we do that, and where do we go, and where do we find the right people? And so, having gone to Switzerland, forced out of the United States on a personal business level, and then watching what's happening in Wyoming about a year ago, I said, I gotta be there. I gotta be part of what's going on in Wyoming. You guys are leading the world now. I mean, it's not just Wyoming. It's kind of fun. You guys are kicking ass, right? right. And and to see what's happening in the United States and saying, how can we be part of it? So with the BPSAA, the idea was is to be able to I'm trying to get the alliance to be more mature and so we have a lot of purists right I burn down the house I'm never going to get into that I'm not going to do that they're not going to take mine I'm like <laughs> saying that's that's not what's happening right. so looking what you're doing on a personal level and what the senator's office is doing and saying look these are the type of people that we want to reach out to as an organization right. how can we work together and I've got like pages and pages of questions about what you're doing where you're going what the vision is how are we going to get there because right. I recognize as a businessman this idea that we're going to live in crypto fantasy land in the wild wild west is not going to work Vincent is a common right and if we're not part of that conversation mm-hmm. we're going to get crushed right no absolutely or oh, either that or, or when we export every viable business out of the United States right I mean that's so two very different realities because there's I mean ultimately at the end of the day there will always be jurisdictions that will not give a shit about AML KYC or any of those aspects right and are happy to let whoever move in their back door but I mean if you're looking for mass scale adoption as a company you cannot as a company you cannot uh, you cannot place your business in the Estonia or the Cayman Islands or any of those other types of entities right. because how do you do business in the United States in the United States I don't care what anybody says is still the financial powerhouse of the for world. sure because it's the petrodollar right and we have Wall Street so if we're gonna if we're gonna play in the financial powerhouse that is the United States um, you know there's certain certain aspects that we have to meet which means we've got to look at security laws we have to look at a bailment we have to look at you know the BSA the Banking Secrecy Act and we have to be able to fit into that niche somewhat right yeah I mean because we have the we have the ability and the capability to kind of you know 
we can change laws. Right. <laughs> so that's that, well, that does make it easier. I, I agree. And so, you know, what my questions are, I've got three categories, right? I have, first of all, the category Wyoming, mm -hmm. right? The next category is the United States. Mm -hmm. And the next category is kind of global. Sure. Um, and so, you know, if, if, if we just if we just take Wyoming and think about what you're doing and what the vision is and not what you're talking about, what you're doing. Right. Right. So, you know, one of the things I think is absolutely astonishing is the fact that you guys legalized the doubt. Mm -hmm. That to me is extraordinary. I don't think that was most, one of my last laws. I know it was, and I don't think a lot of people recognize how important that is because people, again, the, some of the crypto purists just say, "Well, I'm just going to be my crypto fantasy land," right? But the idea yeah. that you can legalize this 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 right. structure is recognized as a legal business, right? Entity, and exactly, there, because it, that pushes the IRS and other entities to legally recognize it, and that's the big strength of right. the state has. Right, and one of the things we say there is, I say, oh, one of my notes is here is that you have an ALCO, you know, you even recognize a basically an ALGO-based, you know, management structure, right. yeah. which is, which I don't know if it's been completely defined yet or anybody even knows how to do, but that's part of the legislation, right? But, but loosely, right? I mean, so one of our one of our big secrets in the state of Wyoming is we don't like to be too definitive. <laughs> it's got to be a little bit of an open end. Uh, so it, when Wyoming first got in the race as far as being a blockchain area that was friendly. There was other states that were had a already where the hell was I? Talking about how you don't define too much, right? Oh yeah, Wyoming. yeah. So when we first got into into this race, you know, because states compete. I mean, that's one of the biggest aspects when you're on a legislative policy aspect. States are always competitive with each other, which is a good thing. We want states to compete. And when Texas came into this space and started competing, yeah, they're making a little bit of noise, right? Yeah, sure, they did great. They passed a really good law. The reason I know that is I wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they went after the digital asset existing law by pointing at the UCC. That entire legislation was drafted by the state of Wyoming, or the first one to pass it. So I'm not, you know, I'm not mad at that by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but, you know, it just means we got to stay ahead of the curve. So when we first got into it, there was outfits like Tennessee and Florida in the mix, right? Definitively. Well, you know, my to state is, seems to have dropped the ball. I mean, I love DeSantis and he's doing great, but from a crypto standpoint, I don't hear any noise coming out of Tallahassee at all. No. Uh, out of the legislature, there's nothing yeah. nothing shaking. I've talked to a couple of those a couple of those cats down there. I'm, I'm friends with uh, I'm friends with a, a couple of um, Florida state legislators, and they've talked to me about it, and they're excited, and they want to do it, but they can't keep their eye on the prize, right? I mean, their biggest deal is, well, which one of the, out of these 24 bills we've passed in the law can we combine? I'm like, none. None. you the, you got to break it out so yeah. and explain each one as you go. There's no slam dunk here. There's no easy layup. There's there's work. Yeah. You know. And so, anyways, these uh, uh with with Florida and Tennessee. Uh, so Florida's big mistake back a, a couple years ago, they thought they were going to attract the uh, the focus and the attention of the uh, blockchain world by putting all driver's licenses was the, their envisionment um, on a blockchain. What what they what their mistake was is and maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not a software developer, right. and, and maybe it could work great. Um, but that attracts one business. Yeah. So that, that was a flop. Yeah. And that was like the last big thing that they proposed. Tennessee um, actually went into defining smart contracts, trying to define what that looks like within the contractual world for their business law. The problem is that they define smart contracts. And six months later, smart contracts had evolved and looked like something completely different. Of course, of okay. course, right? So, you, I, and so now, what's great about Wyoming is I don't have to go do that, right? I can just go ahead and put up my DAO or whatever I want to do and, right. and have a tokenization. But now I'm still at odds with the SEC, right? Right. And right. so that seems to be that seems to be a big issue when I talk to other businessmen, saying, "Well, we have this in Wyoming, and you have these opportunities, and yeah, you went there, and others are going to go there, but that still doesn't make it legal, you know." Now this DAO thing, and it, it kind of gets. It gets Yes, it does. They're, yeah. they're missing an important point, but but you're absolutely well, right. I mean, that's that's the issue is the right. SEC and what they're looking at. Thankfully, um, you know, for whatever waffling Gary Gensler does back and forth, uh, thankfully Gary's been very um, very pointed on one aspect is he's waiting on Congress to take action in regards in regards to what is a security and what what is not, which is great. And if you look at in large part of what the SEC has gone after, um, I'd say for most of them, 
that the SEC has gone after, they've not been wrong. There's been a lot of theft in that yeah, space. I there's been a lot of shit going on. Well, you know, there's this, this latest thing that they passed, um, and, and where's my notes on it? Um, the tokenization uh, safe harbor, uh, and they're looking at Rule 195, right? So it was written by Hester Pierce, right? And, and they're talking about kind of like a little development window for two or three years and all that. And I guess that's great, but that's that's only a proposal. Mm -hmm. And they move at a glacier pace, right? I mean, this is why we need Congress right, to take action. Right. What was it? The Jobs Act, right? Back when two, was, uh, was it? Was it uh, um, maybe even uh, Obama? The Jobs Security Act, where you could now turn around and have mass solicitation and reg four, what, what is it, five hundred four D, and all these ideas about being. And it took fifteen or twenty years, even after the law was passed by Congress, for SEC yep. to even start addressing the legality of what got passed right. by Congress. Right. And so, as you know, crypto, a week in crypto is like a year for anything else. That's right. And so when we think about Wyoming passing these 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 laws and, and, and pushing pressure on the SEC and Congress, and you say, oh, it's great, they got to make a decision, but it could be years. Well, it could be for forms right. and th that type of, you know, regulatory action to, to shake out. Now, at the same time, that piece of legislation is not going to preempt or exempt out other states. If another state wants to take another route, they should be able to do that, even if it's the wrong route, like the bit license in New York. I right. applaud New York and their bit license. I think it's wonderful that they've done that because those businesses are now in my own world. So I want, yeah. I, yeah. I want states. And I, I, I think that's the most important aspect. In fact, I had a, a friend of mine in this space that lives in Austin, Texas, get really mad at me the other day because he's he's got a friend in West Virginia or an associate that was wanting to use him as a consultant um, to be able to pass these types of laws in West Virginia. And so he wanted me to put, put me on the phone with those guys. And I told him, absolutely not. I will never do that. And my reasoning is simple. I did all of these bills. Everything that I've done has not been about crypto. It's got nothing to do with blockchain technology or my love of it or crypto. Even though I've been an investor in this space, I didn't get involved because of my wholehearted belief in crypto, which exists. I, I got involved and I changed the laws and, and made them attractive in the state of Wyoming to get those businesses to get you here to Wyoming. I'm here, right? right. Yeah. That's, that was the sole purpose of it. So when other states come to me and they're like, hey, we need help doing this, I'm like, well, this is what it looks like. This is the framework. Well, how do I present it? Question, right? And that is with regards to Senator Lummis and what's happening with legislation when it gets announced will be exciting. But, and this is another one of my points on here. It seems to me that once again, crypto is becoming a partisan issue, isn't it? And it, I, it is, and that's and dangerous. I, I, and I hate to say that. That's bad. That right? is really bad. But it is because no. crypto is decentralization of less control. It's more, I want to say, libertarian. God forbid I use that word right, which I am. Most mm -hmm. crypto people are. Sure. I can wear that hat. You've got a political career. I don't. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, you'll have those individuals in media on both ends that point and say, you know, because, because you know, X is this, even though X is not. Yeah. It, it's bullshit. And current, uh, you know, current, current estimates as far as numbers of wallets and exchanges on verified accounts shows that about 13% of the nation owns some form of crypto at this point. Right. So 13%. Now compare that to Congress. 535 total members. We know, we know what senator has been going That's right. So we got 435 in the House, and we've got 100 in the Senate. Out of those 535 members, you know how many of them own crypto that we know of from financial disclosures? They're not five. Wow. Fucking five. That's less than 1%. Less than 1% of Congress owns crypto. That's a, good, that's a good stat. I love that. Right? Whereas 13% of the nation, the people that they're representing, own. And it makes you scratch your head a little bit. Well, maybe, you know, maybe there's some education. And that's why that's why Cynthia has concentrated so much on education in the Senate. That's why she started the Financial Innovation Caucus, and now I'm down the line and partnered up with Senator Sonoma. Yeah. Um, again, I I'm, I'm worried about polarization. Polarization. Yeah. Well, polarization as well. well it's of, not good. Of, it's of, not of what's going to happen. Yeah, it's, so it's not a good scenario that that, that is the, the case and that is shaking out. Yeah. Um, I was reading an article this morning by the Cato Institute. As it stands today, if it passes right now, it basically makes cryptocurrency illegal in the United States or anybody that touches it, right? That won't, that won't ever happen. I mean, so uh, so first of all, the Infrastructure Act doesn't go into a place. Culture. The two provisions in there under this section, I guess it's called 80603, and it references two IRS mm -hmm. rulings, right? The, 60, the 645 definition of broker and the other one, the 650 uh, of... Uh, 
tracking currency as is, as it is. I mean, if if you if you if you happen to pay some type of hosting uh, uh, hosting, uh, you know, you're running a node, or you get some type of block reward, or you're mining. You know, I know Wyoming says, hey, we want to welcome miners here. Well, now if you're mining and you're and you're and you have anything to do with that, I mean, technically speaking, the so bill 2023, right? It's part of our bill to fix that. So. If, 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 if that will be fixed. Thank you very much. It was actually it was actually a really good thing that it happened. We got to look at the upsides on this. It's okay. Great thing. Wonderful. Why do you think that was? Well, Why would I say that? I would say just to get it on the docket or get some attention to it. I would imagine the the fucking firestorm that that shook it was incredible. And all of a sudden, people all over the U.S. Senate are starting to flock to the Financial Innovation Caucus. Are calling Cynthia all the time. Want more information? How can they help? How can they be good in this? Because all of a sudden they got lit up back home. They felt pain. It was great. It was wonderful. Which opens up the door for larger changes, right? I mean, if we just show up with a bill on security law, changing the definition of a security and taking into consideration utility tokens or ICOs, right? Um, consumable tokens, however you want to call it. That's a fucking nothing burger. It's whatever. Okay, well, I look but now, I, all of a sudden. I appreciate the positive spin on yeah. it because, you know, we look at it not quite understanding it, and, 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 and the football keeps getting kicked down the road. You know, it's, there was a couple provisions that looked like they were really going to clean it up before it went in, you know, before it went for passage. And that one Republican, I forget his name, he shit canned it because he threw something in at the last Shelby. minute. Shelby. Shelby, right. You know, and, then, and, then, and like those little provisions, that, that three or four sentences would have made a huge difference in the bill. Mm -hmm. And it didn't. Yeah, so, so it was my boss's amendment. Right. So, you, so, yeah, so your your opinion is is that, is that we're still okay, it won't be until no. 2023, and by 2023 we're going to fix it? Correct. It'll be done by then. Man, oh man. I hope so. I'm a policy director for a U.S. Senator. Trust me on this. It'll be done. I, I know you're just sitting in a little sun. That's why I'm mean, kind of hard to envision, but I promise you. <laughs> well, it, I, it, like I said, I think that, you know, the, you've got the, the it, it's become, crypto's becoming so political. It's right. almost, well, it's, Senator Lemus has done a fantastic job of, of making sure that uh, the other folks in the Senate understand that this should be a priority. I suppose if we hold the Senate, and I mean Republicans, so to speak, even though I'm trying to be nonpartisan here, sure. then we'll be okay. But, you know, if, if something weird happens, um, you know, you, <laughs> I just, I guess I'm a little bit more worried than I used to be. I wonder why my dad was always so pissed off. <laughs> now I understand because they can no longer. Right. Right. And you look at this stuff. So I've been in, I've been involved in politics for the better part of a decade, and uh, you know it's always it's always so far behind business. It really is, and it's there's some really truly incompetent people involved. But on the same same vein, there's some truly pretty impressive individuals involved uh, that do have a history of being able to get shit done and being able to wreck the world. Yeah. And I just when, happen to work for one of them. Yeah, well, no, Lummis is, you know, she's a diamond in the rough, but when you can elect somebody to to the, to, to a, a representative position in the United States who thinks an island will flip upside down when too many people are on it. Yeah, right. Right? I mean, that's not a joke. Hank right? Johnson. Right. No, I know. Georgia, Hank Johnson. Yeah. Yep. It's 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 scary. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the it's the thirteen percent versus one percent right now. You know, I mean, that's that's the the difference in reality. Well, all right. So I had that. You know, talking about it. So we think about we have Wyoming. We're ahead of the curve. The the takeaway is is that Wyoming is going to force the SEC and the and let's say greater legislation to be able to take it to, to be able to move and try to address some of these changes. If I guess right now. For example, um, if, if you wanted to have a DAO or a token offering or something like that in the, here in Wyoming, you could do it, but you could still run afoul with SEC, right? You still have to turn around basically accredited investors kind of. and, and all not, that not, stuff. Not really, no. Um, so it depends on how you do it. It's ha it depends on how you set it up. So if I, were if I were in that space and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have any issues, and I talked to my securities attorney and he said, you know, there's just no way through uh, a Reg B or something like that. And I was going to do it solely in Wyoming. And you could solely do it in Wyoming without any touch from the SEC. Absolutely, you could. Does that mean that everybody would have to be a Wyoming resident and be Wyoming? Not necessarily a resident. 
could be an LLC. Could be part of a series LLC. Yeah. Well, that's why we like the series here. Well, and so you know, there's there's reality in, in regards to security laws. It's, I mean, essentially, we're looking at 1934 right. um, legislation that's governing 2021 technology, and, and so that's the rub, right? Right. Um, so that's why, in my opinion, there's several jurisdictions too that have adopted our ICO law. That was one of my first bills in this space was in regards to ICOs, and, and uh, Colorado, Montana, and the list goes on, up up and down. That you know you can basically point to you know, a dozen different places in the United States that have that in the books, and all of them point to each other. Yeah. So that does open up that nexus that you would be able to look at folks in other jurisdictions. The problem is um, just to keep it clean and neat and whatnot. But if I were going to do it, I'd do like a series LLC of, and I would every every series um, of my main LLC, I would match with a token. You want to buy sure. a thousand tokens? You well, you can make one of ten million. Talking about Wyoming and one of the famous quotes is you guys are open for mining, right? And miners. We all saw what happened with China, and now it's almost there's a question about U.S. versus China. But let's talk about Wyoming and mining, right? So I drove by Jalep with my daughter yesterday. We came through. We saw the coal plant, all this stuff. And I mean, full high tech. You only saw one, too. Just north of town is another one that's even bigger. Well, the one we drove on the main highway, full high tech, automation. Yep. We saw this like, whoa, it was really cool. Yep. And there wasn't plumes of no, noxious of gas coming out and all right. that. But when you think about mining and you think about Bitcoin state, I mean, mining needs a lot of power. And we know that it would, even though people, the greenness or ungreenness of Bitcoin is debatable, you know, how would Wyoming talk about being a green mining state? Or you guys are like, we're not even going to try to come here. We're going to give you power. Nobody cares. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. Um, what I do have an interest in is attracting businesses to the state of Wyoming. So we've got entities like BitDeer, Bitmain that are already here. Um, that's not the that's not the little dog on the, no. the totem pole. No. So why are they here instead of Texas? Well, it's pretty simple. Texas can light them. Yeah, well, we know that already, right? right. The minute it gets cold, a statement rather than a question so you can eat. Uh-huh. Um, is that with regards to the BPSAA, we are, again, a grassroots organization. We want to be part of the solution. We don't want to be part of the problem. And even though we have a lot of people that are part of the organization that are these crypto purists, as, as, our, as our little organization matures, we recognize that we want to be part of the conversation. And so I would like to offer or ask if it's possible we can have a relationship with, with, the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the Office of the Senator and how that we could work together to either promote her ideas or her, her messages uh, her, you know besides just something more than just say oh we you know we are we retweeted one of the senators tweets right is there some type of open dialogue is there a way that we can have a formal alliance is it possible we could put out you know you have to do more due diligence I understand but maybe a press release that hey that we met and we're working together and we have like-minded ideas and that you know if that we could try to gather I want to try to get our organization and become a more mature, a more mature uh, approach rather than just all these purists. And I think the, the businessmen in our organization recognize that. Right. And I've always told everybody, said, well, let's you know, reach out to your senators and reach out to your congressmen. And and everybody's waiting for the lead. And I'm on the board of directors, and so I'm like, guess what? I'm leading the charge with this meeting. This is the first official meeting we've had with anybody in in the United States, other than maybe just a couple emails or a text message to somebody. Right. Sure. We don't have any problem with you guys saying, hey, we met with Senator Lummis's office where, you know, well, they've asked us questions about certain pieces of legislation, and you know, nothing wrong with that. The fact that we met, we had a dialogue, and we're talking, and, you know, and we're, we, we, see, we see the same on, on, on crypto uh, issues and regulatory environment, and we want to be part of it, and whatever, you know, industry stalwarts looking forward, right, for the right message. So, you know, it's funny, you answered one of my questions. One of my questions here was talking about um, about about crypto versus an asset.
asset versus a commodity. You know, when you think about it right now, in the United States, if you buy Coca-Cola with Bitcoin, that's a capital exchange. Yes. And you know, I know that you know that nobody knows that. No. Nobody okay. is freaking saying, I sold 400 Satoshis to buy a Coke, no. and here's what I bought it for or whatever. And yep. so, and if we get beyond it or Litecoin or whatever else, how would we even, how would we even approach that? And, 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 and is, you know, some just like Germany, I think, has got, uh, has got, or Switzerland, one of them has got saying, look, any cryptocurrency transaction less than this amount is not considered a capital exchange. Yeah. I think, I think. Does Senator Lummis have a, a, any ideas about, you know, broader? I think in certain situations, it definitely should be exempt. Um, you know, as long as we don't give it enough, enough of a leg up that all of a sudden we're, we essentially see washing happen, happening. The other day, I bought cows with Bitcoin. So it's definitely happening. You know, I paid for my roof <laughs> earlier this spring to get repaired with Bitcoin. Well, but right, I mean, technically speaking, you have to go in there and say, what's my basis of Bitcoin? What did I buy it for? What did I sell it for? That's right. I have a capital gain or not. And so I, you know, that was one of the things, one of one of our, our, our folks said, hey, can you ask about that? And so the answer is, yeah, we know that, but there's no answer, right? Unless we could turn around and try there, to have There's it. really no answer at this point. I mean, it, it's going to come down to an exemption has to be made, but it has to be done exceedingly carefully. Um, so that we're not creating the washing effect. Yeah, right. Well, as I said, I recognize, you know, our organization recognizes, at least I'm trying to get them to recognize it, that there is going to be legis there is going to be legislation, and with regulatory stuff becomes becomes acceptance. We just don't want to kill the golden golden goose, right, by choking it off like what China right. did, right? Mm -hmm. And thinking now about uh, the United States versus China, and I know that uh, you know the new SEC chair and others saying, look, we're not going to make Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies illegal, and the fact that China is making it, all of it, right, and you see mass exodus, right, and all the exchanges and all the mining and it is great for the United States that we can step into that yeah. right I mean it's an extraordinary well, opportunity and so with the with the with the would you believe does the senator believe that the United States is there enough is there enough people that are aware of what's happening that they say look this is something that we don't want to crush you know even, even on the Democrat side does absolutely. everybody recognize that, we, that this is an opportunity for us and they don't want to kill it absolutely right okay absolutely right and I think on the the, the Democrat Side, we just have to change the conversation. Right? The conversation needs to be changed in regards to banking the unbanked and you know that that type of aspect versus uh, you know for the Republicans about investing your own money and how you see fit. So it's just a different type of conversation, but it's the same conversation. That's how we get them. Yeah, and that and that brings us to this, right? That's another one of my highlight topics. Is the fact is what now thinking about the, the the entrenchment of the banking industry. You know, when I explain, you know, when I explain, uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer transactions and, and no central authority and, and, and using the right cryptocurrency, of course, not Bitcoin, it's really not a cryptocurrency anymore, but there is no fees, there is no 2% or 3% of fees of fee or other things. People look at it and they go, they think you're nuts, right. but but for the rest of us that understand that, I mean, and we know that Jamie Dimon and those others, they know that. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what is the influence, the negative influence on Congress and and with regards to these political donors and all that right. to keep the system intact, right? This protectionism to be able to protect the current financial system. Because quite honestly, you know, if you if everybody is using crypto, then we wouldn't even we would need a Visa or MasterCard, right? And right. that's scary for a lot of people, right? So I think one of the biggest and best arguments that can be made in that case that I think is is the most telling for a lot of political figures that do accept those donations and whatnot. Um, is based on the, the the simple aspect that we can take action in the United States. We can shut it down right now and make sure that every one of those transactions is you know, tracked, that people are paying their correct percentage of fees or taxes, however you want to call it, on every transaction. We can do that tomorrow. Easy deal. Done deal. And the day after tomorrow, this tech will go right past it and figure out a new way, a better way. And they'll go right past us again if we try and try and track the reality.
reality, what we need to do is not try to shut them down, not try to corral them into an existing box of technology that was built 50 years ago, but it's fitting an innovative look on this innovative technology in regards to regulations. And if we can if we can manage that, then not only do we get the benefit of them do where, they, where they do fit within that regulatory scheme and they play within that sandbox, but they also stay in the state in the state of Wyoming or they stay in the state of Nevada, they stay in the United States, um, where we can make sure that they are good corporate citizens and we can flourish while they flourish. And that adds to our tax base and that's all is good. Yeah, you think the first two banks, right? Right are here in Wyoming. Avanti and Winston, there's another one, right? Kraken. Right, right. Kraken's coming up here, so yeah. which is gonna be great because it should be nice to have a fiat on ramp and off ramp without all the shit that they're to go through now, right? right? I mean it's absurd. And as soon as the Federal Reserve pulls the trigger on them, you're gonna see bigger outfits, much, much bigger outfits circle the way. One of the most important things that's ever been said to me about exchanges was actually said to me by Jesse Powell, the CEO of Kraken and founder of Kraken. He said, get your goddamn coins off my exchange. As soon as you're done trading, get them the hell off. Yeah, right. Why is that? There you go. Because of situations like this that are outside of their control. I love that quote. I, li I like that you said that. That's really cool. Yeah, then then, then he doesn't have the then he doesn't have the fiduciary responsibility. Right. That's that a responsible stuff. thing to do. He's trying to turn you know his users. They're using his uh, his exchange into responsible fiduciaries. Yeah. The tech will just revolve around it. All right, you're going to go ahead and get a capital exchange. Well, guess what? Now I'm going to turn around. I'm going to use the dex, and I'm going to trade, and I'm going to do that, or I'm going to yep. use other things around it. So there's there's yeah. even an answer. Are right there. It's going right. to happen. Yep. It's going to happen. Is this whole idea about CBDCs, right? Does uh, Senator uh, Lummis have any ideas about that? You know, uh, I she just thought, gave a speech on it. I thought it'd be ago. great. And then you look at what China is, where they when they put out theirs, they basically said, look, if you don't spend it in three weeks, we're gonna, it's going to vaporize out of your wallet. And that gets pretty scary. Oh, yeah. No, it's super sketchy. Well, on the digital wand is kind of a joke. But um, I mean, that's in effect, that's why China banned Bitcoin and everything else, is because. It's in competition with the digital wand. Right. Why, so why would they? Why would they allow it to keep around in a, in a very, you know, centralized controlling entity? That's why they did what they did, in my opinion. So when it comes down to CBDCs, um, in fact, Senator Lemus did a speech on the Senate floor two weeks ago, where she laid out five very important principles about what a CBDC were to look like in the United States if one were to be adopted. Now, granted, that's not an endorsement by Senator Lemus that if you check all these boxes, I'm an eye vote or anything like that. But, but what that is, is putting a marker down saying, if we're going to go down this road, it needs to it needs to take these things into consideration. Um, you know, a lot of the, you know, those five principles have to do with privacy. Have to do with the, uh, the ability to transact in an anonymous manner, or at least in a, in a manner that does protect the individual user. And it's not because Senator Lummis wants to, um, you know, hide things from any centralized government or anything like that, it's because Senator Lummis wants to ensure uh, that an individual could buy a can of Copenhagen without the government looking at them and send them a letter that, hey, this will give you cancer. It's none of their goddamn business. And so, um, you know, she's been a consistent champion of privacy in that regard. But anyways, I would encourage you to check out that, well, that, check out that floor speech because it was I a mean, fireball. But, but the idea being with that is, is, is that something that's in the cars? Does the senator think in three to five years? Three to five I, well, yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely in the cards. I think it's definitely as, as far as what we've heard from the Federal Reserve and what we've seen. I, I mean, essentially, we're already there. Well, yeah, but you know, I mean, who who actually thinks that cash is king anymore? I mean, it's, most people's paychecks are delivered electronically. Yeah, of I course, mean, so. of course, it, it, it is. But you think about the idea, you know, of course, the principles of having a cryptocurrency style is the fact that you don't need Visa and Mastercard. If I had a digital U.S. dollar, then I could just pay here this bill with doing come right out of That's my wallet, right? right? And they wouldn't right. have to pay a fee to Visa or MasterCard, which would be good for your buddy here that owns the right. business because right. he's not losing a 3% right. cut on every meal, right? Right. But you're also talking about an existing infrastructure as far as the federal payment rails that would have to be completely revamped and completely overhauled. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and that federal payment system, has, as I'm sure you're aware, is an absolute hot mass of garbage. Um, yeah, my, my wife is actually German here. And in Europe, you know, you can walk up to an ATM, one of their banking machines, and you could do basically instantaneous wire transfers anywhere for any 
amount that costs nothing. Versus this idea with this this ACH and all this shit. I mean, and that's only why because guess what? We're gonna hold on your money for a week before we pay it to somebody else. Right. I mean, and, and it's absurd. And again, that's just that entrenched interest right. to keep a very old antiquated system I, I would in place. I've actually talked to my mother and father-in-law about this. Uh, they're not into, into this space or um, you know super hyped up about you know assets, digital assets and whatnot. But I can't remember what they were doing. They were they were buying something. They were sitting at my dining room table and they're buying something online and and uh, they're like, well, we don't get paid till the fifth, so we gotta hold off. I said, what do you mean you get paid? Don't get paid till the fifth. I said, well, we get paid on the fifth and the twentieth. I said, well, that's not actually true. You get paid on the first and the fifteenth. They said, no. Money doesn't show up until. Yeah. And I said, well, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that's because the federal payment system is a hot mess and they do hold these uh, deposits for a week. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the cost of doing, doing business in the United States and an unfortunate reality. Uh, but, you know, I mean, there's technologies out there that are being come about with all the time. One of those really, in, in my opinion, unfortunate aspects as far as what the Federal Reserve System is currently doing when looking at a CBDC is one of their first outreaches is just partnering up with MIT, which a lot of people would look at that and smile because there's a lot of goddamn smart people at MIT. MIT has never come out with a digital asset. They've never come out with their own blockchain. They've never done any of that. So why wouldn't you partner with industry experts that have done these things, that have learned the lessons yeah. around? Why are we partnering with people that have never built anything like this? Well, it sounds good, doesn't it? Though? Yeah, it it's sounds sound, cool. It's a sound bite, MIT it? sounds like cool. I, I, I would have felt more comfortable if they would have said, you know, we're consulting with Vitalik Buterin and, and yeah. Charles Hoskins. Yeah. I would have felt a lot more comfortable about that exchange than, yeah. than who at MIT? Yeah. I don't know. Well, like I said, I run a Cardano pool with a, with a friend of mine, and uh, we were one of the very first pools. And we, we actually mined one of the very first blocks, and we were excited about cool. that. We're a small pool. We're not one of these mega sure. pools. We only got, a, I don't think, four or five million ADA. Mm -hmm. But hey, we're there. We're a player. We were one of the first. Yeah, and yeah. it's been a lot of fun. And hot stuff, you know, Charles is on his way to Africa because they're willing to start looking at this and how do we use this, yeah. this existing platform right. and of course speed with beef chain and all that other stuff and so you know you've got some technologies out there gen 3 type of stuff that's really cool um but you know boiling back to where we're at with with the senator and the work that you've done you know in summary first of all thanks for your time today it's, yeah it's no, fantastic absolutely. to meet you from just an individual to see thanks for all the work you've done you bet because and 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 i'm so pleased to be here in wyoming and to see what you do and i just hope you guys can keep on beating the drum and we don't get beaten down i am weak politically Mm -hmm. about what's happening um, and I see the technology moving so uh, the, not the technology the technology moving so fast and everybody else is moving so slow and I hope you and Lummis and everybody else and a few others can hang on and do it because I think it's an extraordinary opportunity for the United States have you read the book Layered Money? oh yeah of course, of course. I never understood what was happening until I read that book and it put it in perspective mm -hmm. there is a tectonic shift underneath our feet for humanity mm -hmm. and what's happening with, with, with currency and money. And I said, you owe it to yourself to read the book. Whether you buy Bitcoin or not is your decision, but you do need to understand what's going on. And when I read that book a year ago, I never understood what's really happening. It, this is a life-defining moment for humanity. I believe it's that big of a deal. Well, most people don't have a fundamental, a fundamental understanding of their own money. Right. They don't even have an understanding yeah. about what it's backed by. Yeah. It's fucking nothing. Nothing. Right. <laughs> well, you know, it's, well, it's a dollar. I said, you know, it's a back by. Well, uh, it's a dollar. I said, yeah. I said, well, we kind of had gold until Nixon came around, right. but I said it isn't backed by anything. What's Bitcoin backed by? I said, well, actually, Bitcoin, it's not backed by anything other than faith either, to be honest with you, but there's only 21 million of them. Right. You know, worth the U.S. dollar, we're trading a couple trillion every day. I, right? trigger, I trigger everybody <laughs> once in a while because I consider Bitcoin to be kind of a bastardized fiat. It's not backed by anything like the U.S. dollar, right. so it's, it's fiat nature. Right. Uh, but with the hard cap and uh, other protocols around it, it's a little bit of a bastard. I don't have a college degree under my name. I'm a cattle rancher in Northeast Wyoming. That's what I'm going to be till the day I die. If I happen to go along and, and change some laws and, and get some shit done on the side. Well, cool. you have. Yeah, but yeah. that doesn't mean you're done. You can't no. be done. No, shit, no. Something will, something will grab my attention. <laughs> Is there anything on the front burner for you? Just, I mean, just off the record individually that you're really excited about? I, I got a class I'm giving tonight on Bitcoin. Okay. <laughs> That's nice. 
that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. And I'm talking to a city council tomorrow and uh, giving another class tomorrow night. And, you know, so that's good stuff. I got back from D.C. late Friday night. That's a nice thing. Well, you know what they say, the way you eat an elephant one bite at a time. That's right. right. So, um, with Lummis' office, is there anybody else out there that you think, I mean, she, to me, is the clear leader, right? I mean, it's her and then there's like yeah. kind of everybody else. Is there anybody else out there that she kind of says, hey, this is kind of one of our pals? Yeah. Somebody that we should maybe, maybe reach out to next and say, look. Kirsten you know, Cinema, 100%. There's there's your bipartisanship. She's a Democrat out of Arizona. Her whole party hates her. She's doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. Well, we need that, right? I mean, if you could get two people, especially two women, right, that are out there banging the drum on this. Well, that's the, the that's your two leaders of the Financial Innovation Caucus in the uh, in the Senate. Okay. Is uh, two women um, that have a very firm grasp on it. I mean, shit. The other night during the debt ceiling debate, my boss, Senator Cynthia Lummis, said, "Thank God for Bitcoin." Coin on the Senate floor at the microphone. I, I guarantee those words have never been uttered at the never. microphone on the Senate floor. Never. It's so that's Yeah, so it's, it's wild times. We've, we've got good support. Um, you know, the Senator's going to do her thing and she's good at it. Um, but as far as making sure that, you know, wherever these other companies are, are located, that they're, that they're currently working with and making contact with their Senators is invaluable. It's huge. You seem very upbeat. I feel much better about it than I did before. I, yeah, I, you gotta I'm, look not, up. I'm not trying to be negative. I, I mean, I love the technology. I love what's going on, but I, you know, I turn on the news and I just say they're gonna they're gonna kill this thing. Right. You know, and especially when you read that like that infrastructure bill is out of your mind. Right. Well, and so I, I I used to be in the same spot. I really was, and it wasn't that it wasn't that damn long ago. And I used to get so goddamn down on various different issues. When I first got involved, it was like back in 2008. I was looking at this guy Ron Paul. Yeah, sure. Yeah, everything was saying. <laughs> Makes sense. I'm By the way, I had lunch with Rand Paul during his presidential election. Nice. I, got to, I got to go to Orlando and I had a, a white uh, a, a lunch table with him. We sat down and uh, and what a brilliant young well young yes, he's not young man he's mine. <laughs> what a brilliant guy. I, I I always liked him and I kind of liked his dad. His dad's a little bit goofy, mm. but when I sat and we sat at a table like and it was just so casual, just yeah. just like you and I. And there, and there he is. And, I'm, and when he spoke, compared to the sound bites he gets on TV, he's freaking brilliant. Yeah, no, he's, Smart dude, he's a sharp man. dude. So I, I, I got started in the political round back then, and I, you know, I was just down on everything. This sucks, but this this one guy's got it going on, and he's awesome. 2012 comes around, he's running it again, so I'm like, all right, but I, I know how the caucus system works a little bit. I became chairman of the county party, um, invited all my friends. This county went to Ron Paul in 2012. One of the only ones, but we yeah. did it. Um, and then I went to the National Convention as, as a delegate from the state of Wyoming. Um, got their shit kicked in. And it was really just, you know, this shit doesn't work. So then I ran for the state legislature. And then I started changing some laws. Yeah, it works. And, and something, you. yeah, something that one of my first speakers said to me that really resonates with me. And so it's, I try to do it as much as possible, even when shit looked bleak like this with the Infrastructure Act going in a law and those types of things. He just said, look up. That's it. So I just look up. I don't look up. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So even though... Oh, gee, thanks for that. <laughs> right? I mean, but, you know, at, at the time I thought, okay, what does that mean? But, yeah, I've kind of adopted it as my own mantra now. And, you know, every time it looks like shit, you know, there's an upside to the Infrastructure Act going in law. It's going to make us all look like shit. We're going to have to change that law. It's going to be horrible. No, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's so good because we're going to have to change it, right? Well, Just turn on the fire, sprinkle on some hell in the U.S. I suppose we're going to have to, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's all from us today. Do not forget to tune in again next month for another exciting BPSA podcast. Goodbye.